Hey guys, what up? No makeup first of August. Just kidding, I've just been studying all day, so I don't get no makeup on my face. Additionally, this is not a... well, this is it, so... Anyway, I wanted to read to you guys some really cool document from my women's history class because it is awesome. Um, if you're a dum-dum who thinks that feminism means that we all hate men and all men are rapists, then please go away and don't watch this video. I don't need you here. Um, <laughs> feminism is the oppression of... No. Feminism is the opposition to societal oppression of women. It is the desire for equal rights for everyone. It is not casting individual men as villains on an individual basis. It's casting the system as a fucking problem because it allows people to oppress, okay? So, now that we got that out of the way, I want to read you this beautiful document. You don't have to watch this, I just love it. By Pat Maynardi, 1970. It's called The Politics of Housework. All right. Liberated women, very different from women's liberation. The first signals all kinds of goodies to the warm hearts of most radical men. The other signals housework. The first brings sex without marriage, sex before marriage, cozy housekeeping arrangements, and living with the chick, and self content and the self-content of knowing that you're the kind of man who wants a doormat instead of a woman. That will come later. After all, who wants that old commodity anymore? The standard American housewife. All husband, home, and kids? The new commodity, the liberated woman, has sex a lot and has a career. Preferably something that can be fitted in with the household chores, like dancing, pottery, or painting. On the other hand is women's liberation and housework. What? You say all this is trivial? Wonderful, that's what I thought. It seemed perfectly reasonable. We both had careers, both had to work a couple days a week to earn enough to live on, so shouldn't we share the housework? So I suggested it to my mate and he agreed. Most men are too hip to turn you down flat. You're right, he said. It's only fair. Then an interesting thing happened. It can, I can only explain it by stating that we women have been brainwashed even more than we can imagine. Probably too many years of seeing television of women in ecstasy over their shiny wax floors, or breaking down over their dirty shirt collars. Men have no such conditioning. They recognize the essential fact of housework right from the beginning, which is that it stinks. Here's my list of dirty chores. Buying groceries, carting them home, putting them away, cooking meals, washing dishes and pots, doing the laundry, digging out the place when things get out of control, washing floors. The list could go on, but the sheer necessities are bad enough. All of us have to do these things or get someone else to do them for us. The longer my husband contemplated these chores, the more repulsed he became, so he preceded the change from the normally sweet, considerate Dr. Jekyll to the crafty Mr. Hyde, who would stop at nothing to avoid the horrors of housework. As he felt himself backed into a quarter laden with dirty dishes, brooms, mops, and reeking garges, his front teeth grew longer and pointier, his fingernails haggled, and his eyes grew wild. Housework trivial? Not on your life. Just try to share the burden. And this is where it gets good. I love this part. So ensued a dialogue that's been going on for several years. Here are some of the high points. I don't mind sharing the housework, but I don't do it very well. We should each do the things we're best at. Meaning. Unfortunately, I'm no good at washing dishes or cooking. What I like best is a little light carpentry, changing light bulbs, and moving furniture. How often do you move furniture? Also meaning. Historically, the lower classes, black men and us, the women, have had hundreds of years experience doing menial jobs. It would be a waste of manpower to train someone else to do them now. Also meaning. I don't like the dull, stupid, boring jobs, so you should do them. All right, next. I don't mind sharing the work, but you'll have to show me how to do it. Meaning, I ask a lot of questions. You'll have to show me the everything every time I do it because I don't remember so good. Also, don't try to sit down and read while I'm doing jobs because I'm going to annoy the hell out of you until it's easier to do them yourself. We used to be so happy said whenever it was his turn to do something, meaning, I used to be so happy. Meaning, life without housework is bliss, no quarrel here, perfect arrangement. 
housework is too trivial to even talk about. Meaning, it's even more trivial to do. Housework is beneath my status. My purpose in life is to deal with matters of significance. Yours is to deal with matters of insignificance. You should do the housework. The problem of housework is not a man-woman problem. It's any relationship between two people is one is going to have stronger personality and dominate. Meaning, the stronger personality had better be me. The man. In animal societies, wolves for example, the top animal is usually a male, even where he's not chosen for brute strength, but on the basis of cunning and intelligence. Not cunnilingus though. Isn't that interesting? Meaning. I have historical, psychological, anthropological, and biological justification for keeping you down. How can you ask the top wolf to be equal? Women's liberation isn't really a political movement. Meaning, the revolution is coming too close to home. Also meaning, I'm only interested in how I'm oppressed, not how I, the man, oppress others. Therefore, the war, the draft, and the university are political. Women's liberation is not. Man's accomplishments have always depended on getting help from other people, mostly women. What great man would have accomplished what he did if he had to do his own housework? Meaning, oppression is built into the system, and I, as the white American male, receive the benefits of this system. I don't want to give them up. Participatory democracy begins at home. If you are planning to implement your politics, there are certain things to remember. One, he's feeling it more than you. He's losing some leisure and you are gaining it. The measure of your oppression is his resistance. Two, a great many American men are not accustomed to doing monoton monotonous, repetitive work, which never issues in any lasting, let alone important, achievement. This is why they would rather repair a cabinet than wash dishes. If human endeavors are like a pyramid with a man's highest achievements on top, then keeping oneself alive is at the bottom. Men have always had servants, us, to take care of this bottom stratum of life while they've confined their efforts to the rarefied upper regions. It is thus ironic when they ask of women, where are your great painters, statesmen, etc.? Madame Matisse ran a military shop so he could paint. Mrs. Martin Luther King kept his house and raised his babies. 3. It is a traumatizing experience for someone who has always thought of himself as being against any oppression or exploitation of one human being by another to realize that in his daily life he has been accepting and implementing and benefiting from this exploitation that his rationalization is little different from that of the racist who says black people don't feel pain, women don't mind doing the shit work, and that oldest form of oppression in history has been the oppression of 50% of the population by the other 50%. 4. Arm yourself with some knowledge of the psychology of oppressed peoples everywhere and a few facts about the animal kingdom. I admit playing top wolf or who runs the gorillas is silly, but the last resort men bring it up all the time. Talk about bees. If you really feel hostile, bring up the sex life of spiders. They have sex, she bites off his head. The psychology of oppressed peoples is not silly. Jews, immigrants, black men, and all women have employed the same psychological mechanisms to survive. Admiring the oppressor, glorifying the oppressor, wanting to be like the oppressor, wanting the oppressor to like them, mostly because the oppressor held all the power. 9. Beware of the double whammy. He won't do the little things he always did because you're now a liberated woman, right? Of course he won't do anything else either. I was just finishing this when my husband came in and asked what I was doing writing a paper on housework. Housework, he said? Housework? Oh my god, how trivial can you get a paper on housework? So, uh, again, no copyright infringement intended. I absolutely love that piece. It's amazing. It is so amazing, and I'm so thankful to be reading about women's lib in the 70s. It's just great. So, thank you for watching. If you stuck around with this whole thing, I hope you enjoyed my reading, and uh, stay badass.